this meeting, uh, we're going to have a special guest speaking. So we actually have Dr. Rick Sigo with us today. He's a medical doctor who's uh, practiced family medicine, uh, and he was very kind, uh, and he decided to join us today to talk to you guys a little bit, uh, give you a little bit of info about his story and how he got to where he is in his career today. And uh, hopefully everybody enjoys hearing from him, and at the end of that, we can have a little bit of a Q&A with him before we move on to hearing from the officers. But without any further ado, I want to go ahead and hand it over to Dr. Rick. And certainly stories are always hopefully going to be uplifting when you have uh, somebody that's gone through the gauntlet. <clears throat> but uh, I, I had to think back to when I was in college in pre-med. So if I put myself in that role and I was to ask my future self, what would I, what kind of words of inspiration could I give to my past self. I, I came up with at least three things. Well, let me get into that, but first I'll, I'll tell you what my journey has resulted in. I'm family medicine, fellowship trained in sports medicine, but I was a little bit um, unsatisfied with just the regular training of family medicine. I wanted to have a more musculoskeletal and <clears throat> my history in the past is I love athletics. In fact, I wanted to be physical therapy. I'm not sure if there are any physical therapists that are in the crowd, but I always wanted to be physical therapy, but my mom kept on saying I have to be a doctor. Got some training in, it, it's fellowship training in sports medicine. And then I started to call my own way. I did the average family medicine stuff, like, like it's usually expected after you finish the residency training, three years. But I sprinkled it or peppered it with musculoskeletal medicine. So every disease process that I would see, and I, I would see this even in college, I just didn't have the robust knowledge or the fund of knowledge back then. But everybody that I saw, you see an old person, you think, oh, they're just old. They have thin bones and they're weak. Uh, but me, I, I would say they're old, thin boned, weak, but they also have a little bit of kyphosis. They have a little bit of a gait issue. They have a little bit of a pain because of stiffness and they can't get up in the morning. So I would start to see things in a more holistic uh, viewpoint. Um, and, and I continued on, but as I, as I think most of my colleagues uh, will find when they apply the practice of medicine in their subspecialties, you'll see them morph their expression of practice, how they take care of people, to hopefully what resonated with them before. So I was doing a lot of musculoskeletal medicine, attributing that to my high blood pressure patients and not just staying, you have high blood pressure, I need to give you this uh, medicine, s start practicing a low salt diet. But I'd also take the next step and saying, let's do some cardiovascular fitness, let's burn off some fat, because that will ultimately help with the high blood pressure expression. And maybe if you take care of the root cause, you'll be able to get off the pill and control and or reverse the disease which is something we don't get taught in medical school. So after that, I, again, I got bored uh, or I just wanted more information. You know, there's something cool. Uh, you, I think most of you guys are like in your uh, 20s to mid 20s and uh, neuroplasticity, the way the brain grows and the neural networks that you develop really start to abound up until 25. Uh, those of you who love neurology uh, or, or, or brain stuff, uh, it's, it's funny that, that if you impact the brain with as much data as possible up until 25, you'll be able to grow brain, grow neural networks, come up with problem solving skills that on the fly might be faster than your counterparts in um, literature or your counterparts in allied health. So uh, that's something we're not taught when we're younger. It's like, ah, just do the do the lecture, finish the course, and get your grade at the end after the exam and the finals, and then you're done with it until the next step in um, progression. But all those nuggets that we learned along the way from third grade till, till I, I'm, I think I counted, I'm in my 28th year of training. So I went to UCLA, did a UCLA medical acupuncture course because I wanted to see how Chinese medicine and how their healing uh, that's called a whole system approach, how that healing could overlay onto Western medicine. I learned to do acupuncture. I learned to use that in addition. And, and again, it harkens back to my 
uh, athleticism, it was martial arts that I, I loved, martial arts and power, uh, bodybuilding. I wasn't doing that to be better than my colleagues. I was doing it because there was a deep down desire and a hunger to take care of some folks. I, I, I think of um, a couple of my patients, and, and that's how I get, find the path. Uh, standard patient average win that I can get. You get a lot of them when you get into medicine or dentistry or veterinary school. But what keeps you moving forward, I think, are the wins. Most of them are the wins because when you can solve something, when you can reverse something, when you can deliver a baby, there's such a dopamine response you get. Uh, dopamine's that hormone in the brain that is released for reward. And uh, when, you, when you hold hands for the first time, when you kiss for the first time, when you, when you drive cross country, you buy your car for the first time, when you, when you pass your SATs, there's a dopamine surge because the human genome is supposed to remember that really cool event that happened and it's supposed to make you move towards and replicate it again. These daisy chain activities got me to keep on progressing. So after the acupuncture, I thought it was really good. Nobody else was really doing it in my area. And I got a lot of wins. Now, my mom developed pancreatic cancer. And at that point, I said, I, I know how to take care of that, but I, I, you, couldn't, you can't do anything for pancreatic cancer. So <clears throat> essentially, it's just a palliative care, which is, it really sucks because, you know, you just watch somebody wither away. So I threw as, as much acupuncture as I could to make her comfortable. Uh, I gave her the support. I told her how to do breathing exercises. And uh, I, I still felt, uh, unfortunately, medically impotent because, uh, you know, you, you still watch this person um, go down the tubes. And it's almost like you can't do anything. Uh, so that's when I did my last fellowship in integrative medicine. I thought there's, there's got to be ways to beat this crap before it expresses itself. I found Andy, Andrew Weil is a, a, a Harvard, uh, Harvard graduate, and he founded this, uh, this fellowship or this training called Integrative Medicine. It's when you essentially do what I was doing. You take whole systems like uh, Ayurveda in India, American Indian and herbs, uh, traditional Chinese medicine. You take these whole systems and you kind of cherry pick the best things and you put it into your fund of knowledge and you really have a robust bag of tools to utilize for the very complex patients that come through your door. And I think that it um, gave me insight that uh, Western medicine, which is about 200 plus years old, uh, osteopathic, about the same. And then there's chiropractic and, and homeopathic. So all of these were based, they had a, a, a footprint and they just continued to uh, develop and fine tune themselves. But traditional Chinese medicine, American Indian or South American Indian, uh, Ayurveda, you're talking about systems that have been in place for 2,500 to up to some, some quote, 5,000 years. And they're still in practice. So I think that um, one, of the, one of the problems I see is that uh, when you are raised in uh, traditional medicine, uh, it's uh, somewhat narrow focused. It's nice because the other systems, uh, I, Indian, traditional Chinese medicine, American Indian, they actually get healthy so that they don't need the massive changes. We're really good in, with our uh, intervention but uh, I think one of the problems is you have blinders and you can't practice or you're not encouraged to practice outside of the scope, which is different than what I do. I have to, I insist on going outside the scope to have more tools for everybody that comes through the door because everybody presents differently. But that's kind of bringing me up to speed short of, I am now uh, certified in 400 hours of yoga as a teacher. And I find that the movement of, it's hard to practice Tai Chi and get a try true Tai Chi master. There is one uh, locally. It's hard to practice. That's a lot easier to practice yoga because it's so abundant now. So I became a yoga, yoga, yoga teacher through um, uh, the course of Deepak Chopra. And that also introduced me a little bit to Ayurveda, right back to where I was before. So that nugget that I started out with, when I told you my mom wanted me to be a doctor, I wanted to be a physical therapist and use musculoskeletal medicine. I'm doing exactly that now. And it took 
I'm 58 years old now, so wherever the math is, I am right back to expressing the knowledge base that I have gone through all that training and I'm using it for, uh, to, to help with people in the gym, people on the mat, people in the weight room, people in the kitchen, in addition to the hospital. I mean, I still do that anyway, but uh, my love is to take a patient that's sick, see what happens or see how they got there. And then have them express their life as far as exercise, diet, sleep, calming practice to get the best out of that body and mind that they're going through. Because everybody's suffering, but they all fall into the timeline differently at different severities. But unfortunately, right now, like I mentioned before, too, in the United States, everybody's expressing disease in its fullest uh, uh, peak so before, if you had a little high blood pressure, eh, you got your blood pressure checked. Doctor said, you have high blood pressure, take care of it. And I'll give you another year. If you don't take care of it in two years, it'll start hitting you with medicines. And I think because we all kind of just say, oh, okay, I'll take a medicine for that. That's the way we're trained as, as patients. Uh, I don't feel anything. Uh, my blood tests look bad. I'll take the medicine. I'll just go on living uh, and doing what I'm doing, which unfortunately is usually the cause of the disease process. Uh, So everybody's continuing on that paradigm and then they're really falling apart at like 40, 50, 60 with massive disease. Uh, And the triplet, the cocktail of diseases that have been around um, that are what the bread and butter is for primary care, metabolic syndrome, high blood pressure, elevated body mass index, uh, elevated cholesterol triglycerides, and then a sugar that's, uh, or a glucose level that's climbing. And and that's like everybody, uh, it's a, three quarters of the United States, the patients that come in are all based on that. And and everything I just mentioned, uh, cholesterol, weight, uh, blood pressure, those are all preventable diseases. And and, and even without knowing medicines and and medicine intervention, the way you take care of those things is lifestyle. But we don't have a residency of lifestyle. We don't have medical training. Unfortunately, there's there's no time. Uh, those of you who already have a position in school, once you, the first day that you get into medical school, you are hit hard with scheduling. And, and, and now you throw in electronic medical records, um, diagnostic tests that are now abounding. There's no time to learn about exercise or, or breath exercise or calming practice or nature therapy. In fact, uh, I think that because of the schedule being so cramped, that's devalued. Even, even pet therapy, five minutes of petting a dog will bring out so much serotonin that you'll feel good or, or sitting on a bench. I mean, it sounds like it's an old person kind of thing, uh, but sitting on a bench with a dog and just throwing the ball five minutes in a park will decrease uh, inflammatory markers, increase serotonin and give you a smile because you just forgot about all that crap that's going on in the world. And just for that little window of opportunity, uh, the, the um, amount of hormonal change, like dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine, the amount of hormonal change that spikes at that point in time doesn't just spike down and, and decrease. It kind of fizzles out slowly over the course of 10 hours. That's better than any pill I can give you. I can give you Prozac, Zoloft, Paxil that you've heard about. And that'll kind of give you a fake rise. My um, goal is to encourage um, having patients or anybody that walks through the door or even my subscribers on YouTube. If you ask the right questions, if you can get the right answers, you can figure out who's in the room with you. Uh, But if you're truncating the time, because your time uh, allotment is, is, is chewed up. If you wanted to teach somebody how to be from white belt to black belt, you don't say, okay, I'll, 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 give, you, I'll give you a black belt in three weeks. Impossible because you know that people don't, there are some people who don't fit, they can get there or some people who need more time. The problem is uh, uh, medicine is so um, algorithmic. One of the facets that uh, I don't like is that the visit is always going to be truncated. You, you'll probably hear this and uh, you might hear gripes from your relatives. You might have felt it too. Uh, if you've ever been to uh, student health, because I, I used to work at UCF. I was one of the team physicians for UCF back in um, 2005. Uh, I, I quit medicine. I went down to Florida because my mother-in-law was down there, went to Orlando. Um, 
I somehow landed a job with UCF. I landed a job with Cirque Lanuba back when they were there. They're not there anymore. So I took care of your athletes, took care of your, um, mostly the women's sports. I took care of the, uh, the Olympians at uh, Lanuba uh, performers. And I, you know, it, so even if I left medicine, uh, it still drew me back in just like Al Pacino and the Godfather it drew me back in when I wanted to get away uh, because I, again, I, I like, like all of you, we have this nugget of altruism that we, we know that we want to do something. We know that there's a reward there and there's something cool. That's kind of my life at this point in a nutshell. You guys are going to go through the gauntlet, no matter what. We all go through it. And I hate to say it's a, a club, but uh, we are going to be blessed with taking care of some really, really cool people. And some of them um, won't do well. Some, the majority will. But if you think of it this way, you, you have to climb that knowledge base. Um, and and, and even, I, I'm still going back to the Krebs cycle. So those of you who think, I don't care where that carbon chain goes on, it's, it's really important in pharmacology, biochemistry. I hated biochemistry. I think I got a D in one of the courses, but it, it's so essential. I, I even have my daughter's molecules that she was using to figure out how uh, creatine looks because it's kind of cool. You, all that basic stuff that you think might be a waste of time it, it is going to be layered to give you a uh, fund of knowledge that will launch you into the next subject until you can finally express yourself as, as far as what you want to do in your healthcare field. The next thing I hope is when my son graduates, which will be 2022 uh, and I'll be, 50, I'll be 60, I'm hoping to apply for a PhD uh, in uh, either University of Illinois, Chicago, or Northwestern. I'm trying to get uh, aligned with uh, the, the big buzzword now is food and fasting and um, neuroplasticity. And I love all that stuff. So I'm going to switch over from all the, br the muscle stuff and the metabolic stuff to um, this level. Uh, not really celestial, but something of uh, in yoga, it's called the crown chakra, third eye, um, whatever you want to think about it, I think there's something else that's calling to me, but I, I can't invest in that just yet. So I, I guess to round everything off, the three things that I would suggest to you guys uh, on your journey is number one, no matter how you got to this point, whether it's your mom telling you you have to be a doctor or you worked in an emergency room and you love the, f the smell of alcohol uh, swabs and the fast pace of those lights in there and the, the sirens or whatever it is, I think because the gauntlet's going to be really tough and challenging at times and, and your friends are going to be making money and having professions or, or writing books and you're going to still be in training, uh, you have to understand and know why you're in it. So it might not be that important. Maybe some of you figured it out, but um, you should take about five minutes just to sit in silence and just reflect, maybe in a journal, what you're going to tell, like, like I just did with me. What are you going to tell or ask your future self? Where am I going from here? Uh, why am I doing this? So that's the first thing. And, and if you keep that um, next to your heart, when the challenges come up, you just pull that thing out and say, I, I know what I'm doing. Uh, the second thing I'm going to suggest to you guys is you have to treat your body like a temple. It sounds very hokey, uh, but uh, especially with the data from Stanford, I follow Huberman, um, uh, Eagleman, um, uh, Feldman uh, out of, uh, I think it's Miami. But all these guys uh, are PhDs that are showing that it's important to – when you, when you have a fund of knowledge, when you try to learn concepts, all that stuff will work with good sleep uh, because that's how you rewire things. All those things that you learn today, conversation that you're listening to me go through. And when you go to sleep tonight, it's going to be rewired. The brain's going to be rewiring itself to say that is an important piece of information. That's a nugget I want to keep. So I'm going to burn that tract and always keep that. So uh, 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 that's how, that's how um, uh, we take the information assimilated and, and come out with using it late or utilizing it later. So uh, also exercise, you got to exercise. Hopefully you guys are using that gym. If it's still the same uh, UCF gym, that was nice. Um, I, I'm not sure if it's the same one, the two tier and you can see into the gym down below. In fact, they even had a rock climbing area, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I, I tell my patients that if you can't 
if you're doing 50 hours a week and you're too busy, you, you at least do 15 minutes, three days a week. So 15 minutes of high intensity interval training or yoga, um, you can do a yoga routine, 15 minutes on the mat. You don't even have to break a sweat, but if you give the blessing to your brain and your heart that you did something, there, there is reward. And the first treatment of choice for like depression is exercise, uh, but we poo poo exercise because we think there's no time. So the sleep that you're supposed to get, the exercise you're supposed to do, the food that you're supposed to be doing when you're cramming, it, there's a fight or flight response and it's going to make you choose high carbohydrate, crappy food or stimulant, Red Bull. Uh, don't do it. Perfect example of the unexpected. So uh, j just when you think everything's cool and you're cruising along with uh, matriculation, COVID happens. And now everybody's got to be online. Uh, yeah. You know, so uh, I, I think that's, uh, that, that's a testament for being able to roll with the punches. So re regardless of, in fact, that's going to be the, that was my third thing is if you're going to use anything for inspiration to keep you forward, moving forward, falling forward, as Will Smith says, fall forward, uh, pay it forward by investing now and doing the sacrifice and due diligence now to the studies, the eating, the exercise. If it ever comes to a challenging time like now, you're built for it. You did 110%. You won't have any regrets. If you kind of wait and postpone, it's human nature to just kind of, kind of take a nap or blow off the weekend. It's okay, but again, we're, we're healers. You guys are going to be healers. I am one. I'm still developing my technique, but we, uh, we have other people that are dependent. We have other people, animals, families that are dependent on us to do our best. They, they don't have the opportunity. There is sacrifice, but I guarantee you there's going to be reward. Whether it's one patient, one life, uh, your own relatives, there's going to be reward. You just have to wait for that stuff to happen. It'll come, but you're going to have to just go through the gauntlet of learning, bury your head, get through it, learn the concept, push it back, go to the next one and keep on climbing. Uh, the fourth thing is mindful practice. If you don't have a mindful practice, which not, that's not talked to us, but calming practice, spirituality or breath exercise, um, you're going to, if you just pull it out the last minute, it might be tough to get. So I always say a walk in the park. Um, I, I do four, seven, eight breathing, uh, it's a technique of breath exercise, but, um, spirituality, going to church, going to synagogue, stuff like that is really important. Right, well, that was an amazing story. I just want to say super well-spoken. Right. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. I, I appreciate the opportunity. If you have any, uh, uh, came in or Alyssa, if you want to, put my email uh, to the rest of the group or the folks that didn't show. Um, uh, I, I'll take questions anytime. Uh, so okay. uh, I, mm -hmm. I'd love to help if I could. Okay. Yeah. We'll make sure to throw that in the newsletter. We're going to get okay. to that later. Talking a little bit. Sounds good. All right. Thank nice you. working with you guys. Talk to you in the future. Thank you. Bye, Dr. Dr. Rick. Rick.